Good morning. This is Ann McFetridge, and I am here with one of our ISHI ambassadors in beautiful Palm Springs, California. We're really excited to have Myrna with us. So Myrna, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, the focus of your research? Yeah. Hi, Ann. Hey. How are you? Good morning. I'm well, and you? Good, good. Um, We've been here for now a, a day, and it seems so nice with the um, view in Palm Springs. And uh, well, thank you for the introduction. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said, I'm from Lebanon, and this is my second year in my PhD at uh, Florida International University. And I am in the McCord lab. Mm, my research is now focusing on developing a quick and easy method to um, identify species. So in crime scenes, you might not have a human or you can have a mixture of human with other species like your pet or like some meat that you've been uh, working on, like, eat, like probably prepping a meal. Um, so you want to know um, the, the exact species of that biological sample. So that's the reason why uh, we're trying to develop that method. Excellent. Well, congrats. Oops. Excellent. Congratulations on being here. We're excited to hear more about your research, and I appreciate you taking the time out. I know there's so much to do. The workshops start shortly, etc. But we're thrilled to have you here. I'm going to ask you a few questions. We just want to get to know you a little bit better. So hopefully, none of these will seem too out of the blue for you. But after you get your degree, you've obviously got a few years ahead of you yet, but after you finish, what would you like to do with your career after that? Um, well, that's always been um, one of my main goals is like to contribute back to my country. So um, the reason why I've all, I'm all the way abroad, away from family, is to uh, pursue a career that I love since I was very young and that um, I can uh, go back home and to try to uh, develop better the forensic field and uh, to help students who don't have the opportunity, opportunity that I got um, to travel abroad and to study, to be able to um, pursue their dreams as well. So academia-wise. I really applaud that effort. I think the world needs more young people like you who are thinking outside their own little circle. I have an 18-year-old at home, and let me tell you, it's a struggle some days, truly. So uh, what made you want to be an ISHI ambassador? So when the offer was extended, what were you most excited about? Well, first of all, uh, as Ishi, I've er always heard about this conference, and um, I never had the chance before to attend it. And I was like really always um, reading their reports and following their social media, and I've always in were in was interested. And when I, um, my boss, uh, like uh, forwarded the email from Ishi saying that they are recruiting ambassadors and you have to have some qualifications on social media and like to love the field and to spread this knowledge. I was like, that's just on point because it's really my purpose to help back again, not only my country, but maybe the Middle East in specific and the area to um, uh, widespread the knowledge about forensics and what we do because you know those CSI shows show like the forensics as if like it's like so um, easy um, but in fact it is interesting uh, not as it's showed in the movies but again like that's why this opportunity for me was like yes I want to apply I put my heart into the application and the video I made so here I am. <laughs> We're really grateful that you're with us. Um, we were excited to get yours and the other ambassadors' um, videos and truly enjoyed the creativity, et cetera. So bravo to you. So um, was there a particular person or a particular incident that inspired you to become a, a forensic science and move into that? Um, well, if I would, would go back probably 20 years ago, um, so when I was like six years old, um, it started really with a cartoon um, uh, that I used to watch. It's called Conan. And that was like a young boy who really can solve any kind of crime scene and that um, he would go and find evidences and link things together. So it started that way and I used to binge watch that one. And then when I uh, became a little bit older, I was like, I really want to see real crime scenes. So there was this, uh, this uh, investigation Discovery Channel, um, where they put real crime scenes and how they solve it, and I was like, that's really what I want, and that's why I mainly got interested. Didn't have the opportunity in Lebanon. I applied for the Fulbright Scholarship to study forensics, and I came back. Uh, I traveled to the United States to do my master's and now my PhD. So 
it happened that way, I think. Wow. I was watching Gilligan's Island when I was your age, so I think there's a bit of a difference between us. So uh, kudos to you and the new generation of uh, folks who are trying to, to do more with less and not just watch Gilligan and Skipper. So, so obviously, uh, PhD programs are pretty stressful. I've, I've not done one, but I remember when I pursued my MBA, I thought I was going to lose my mind at times. So how do you deal with the stress uh, that you're encountering every day and, and trying to balance that in your work and your personal life? Um, well, that's a very important point because, um, as you said, it is a stressful um, time, especially when it comes to research. You don't always get good results, so you might have, have up and downs. And for me, the fact that I'm, a, I'm away from family and I'm so family um, uh, attached, um, it happens to me. A lot of time I would be down doubting myself and what I'm doing here and I'm homesick and I just want to be home. But then I remember back all of the hard work I put into what I'm doing and the hard work into applying for whether scholarships, fellowships, and um, grants, and the purpose of why I'm doing all of that, not only for myself, but to, to my country as well. So that kind of helps me um, to go back on track and to focus on what I'm doing. Um, I try to de-stress by playing ping pong sometimes and I, especially the smashes, I'm like, just get the anger out of me or the, um, yeah, or the stress. Um, so that helps, or biking as well. Um, so trying to balance um, going out, uh, doing the stuff that I like, as well as um, uh, I do teach also at FIU, so for me teaching is another way of de-stressing, wow. although some people would think the opposite, um, but I do love teaching, especially forensics, and when I see the students interested in what I'm explaining, I'm like just um, so happy, so yeah, that's what I do. You don't normally hear people say they de-stress by playing ping pong, but you know, we have a couple of people on our team and Promega that love playing ping pong. So we'll have to see if we can find you a table around here and you guys can uh, play and uh, enjoy the week that way. So um, what do you think the hardest parts of being a graduate student are? Um, so the hardest part probably is, um, for me, like, is before I was kind of, yeah, I did study away from family in my undergrad, but it was like just two hours uh, driving. Um, so I still uh, get the chance to go and see them. Um, again, back to be family attached. But now I'm all the way across the ocean. Um, it is hard. You Yes, you try to FaceTime them, to call them. Uh, it is hard. The other thing that could be hard is not only you're responsible for everything, um, you don't have sometimes time to cook, you're sick from eating fast food, um, that's hard as well. Um, but the main one is just to really balance between teaching, taking courses, doing research, and give yourself a little bit of time um, for your personal things that you love. That's probably the hardest part. Well, it certainly doesn't go away when you uh, join uh, company or a laboratory, that whole work-life balance continues to elude uh, people everywhere. I think it's even more challenging for women in particular because we're expected to be super women and, and be able to do it all. And that's just a myth. So uh, um, if you learn that lesson younger than I did, I applaud you because it took me a long time to realize that you can't do it all. You just can't. So, but if you had a superpower, what would it be? Wow. Well, talking about superpower, I watched The Incredible 2, that family that had yes. the superpowers. And I've actually thought about it. And um, if I would want to use a superpower in my field, I think the most challenging part could be um, connecting all of the leads in a crime scene. Because each crime scene is really um, unique. Um, not, not, no two crime scenes are the same. And the fact is not only to uh, do your job correctly, but also being able to link all of these to the correct suspect and put that bad person in jail. Um, so I think that that is a superpower. You don't find it in, uh, you don't find, you don't, you cannot solve all crimes, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, decreasing the num number of victims and put people, uh, bad people away. That's uh, a great superpower. I was going for like invisibility, but you know, <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll take the being able to tie all the leads together more quickly to be able to get bad guys off the street. That's uh, quite the thing to aspire to. So it, 
Describe to me what a perfect day for you looks like. What are you doing? Who are you with? Um, you know, what types of ways are you spending the day? Whoa. Uh, yeah, perfect day. I think um, it could be, first of all, having um, a good health um, for you and the people you love. Uh, that's the most important one. Um, and if you have that, and then you just wake up with energy. I'm not a morning person, so if I wake up early but with energy, that's for me a good start. Um, and then just um, doing or at least finishing the to-do list for the day and having good results. For me, when I get good results and I'm trying to think, okay, what's the next step? That's also something good. And then at the end, of course, doing something uh, you like, like, as I said, ping pong or like any kind of sports or uh, meeting friends or doing something fun you like. That for me would be a perfect day. Excellent. Yeah, achieving a little bit of that uh, graduate school personal life balance. That sounds terrific. So what are your hopes for the next generation of female scientists? You know, I'm significantly older than you. I had hopes and so forth, but I'd love to hear what uh, you're hoping for, for not only your own generation, but generations to come. Uh, well, yes, that's um, for me is like uh, seeing the next generation not um, like succeeding is very upset, upsetting um, because um, you know that now we see the influence of the bad influencing of social media on those generations and they think they have to be in a perfect body shape in the perfect looking not thinking about what they have inside their brain so uh, that's hard if we continue that way I think we're losing a bit of our uh, the next generation so I really hope that uh, we encourage more students to go into um, whether sciences or things they love but probably if because I'm into science, like um, women in STEM or women in science, for me seeing the next generation, regardless of any culture barrier, financial barrier, um, any um, socioeconomic, anything that would uh, stop them from pursuing their dreams, to have more opportunities. Like for me, I was lucky uh, enough to get opportunities um, to um, get scholarships since I was in uh, undergrad, all the way to my master's and now my PhD, and even opportunities before that, because you know that my English is not my first language. So the way I got to study English was through an, a scholarship I got during my high school year uh, to get intensive English um, lessons um, as a scholarship with um, an opportunity to have the American Lebanese interculture back home. And then I got an also another scholarship from the US Embassy to do my undergrad full scholarship, then the Fulbright, which was for me the golden gate I think I got um, because it gives you this networking. Um, so yeah, there are opportunities that people or students can um, uh, take advantage of and just never give up. Oops. All right. Is there anything that you would do differently if you had to start again? Well, I would say no. Um, just because I think the way God has um, uh, put the path in front of us has a reason. Um, I wouldn't remove any bad event or like any uh, good one that happened or anything actually because for each one of them I've learned a lot. I've learned um, uh, things about my uh, personality. I've learned things of how to deal with people um, and uh, even if I had sometimes that I would say, I wish this never happened, it's just a moment. But then I would think about it later. I'm like, oh my God, how like things has happened for really a reason. So I've always said everything happens for a good reason and that's why I wouldn't change anything. Okay. Mm, let me skip that one. So I know you have a passion for forensics, but if you could be anything else and do anything else with your career, uh, what would you have pursued? Um, well, let's say I'm not into art. My brain, my, my, I think I'm left or, yeah, I think it's the left brain that functions for me more. Um, but I do see myself um, in academia uh, teaching, um, teaching something I like 
but it could be probably more into a biology chemistry section um, because when I try to because I do I used to do it with my friends like study together group study or like do my own notes and try to explain it and um, thank God that I've always heard back like good comments on why why the, our teacher didn't explain it that way and I'm like oh that's true I never thought about it so I think yeah academia and teaching that would be um, another substitute for me. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out today. I'm really inspired by you. I feel like a slacker sitting next to you, uh, but truly, I, I, I look forward to seeing the rest of your story develop while you're here at ISHI this week, and I look forward to following your career even beyond this week. So thank you so very much.